Yes, Madam Vice President, we recently marked the 75th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and reaffirmed the universality, indivisibility, and interdependence of human rights. We should not allow our cultural, historical, political, and economic diversity to impede efforts to protect universal rights and dignity. Rather, we should use our diversity to ensure that the international system we have created represents all individuals. At its inception, the Universal Declaration did not adequately protect nor represent Indigenous peoples. Today, we must begin by recommitting to work together to enhance Indigenous participation in the United Nations. It is a priority for Canada to address our own shortcomings with our relationship with First Nations, Inuit and Métis at the forefront. Last year, Canada published a co-developed action plan to guide our implementation of UNDRIP. As we participated in the 45th session of the Universal Periodic Review last, last November, the recommendations of this Council underscored we have much more to do. We welcome the constructive dialogue on Canada's human rights record and look forward to the adoption of our fourth UPR report at this session. Equitable and representative systems will be the foundation of our future. Canada is determined to reinforce its support for the rules-based international system that we firmly believe provides an essential framework to advance human rights. This is fundamental to why we are seeking a seat on the Human Rights Council for 2028 to 2030. The work of human rights defenders has never been more important and we must do everything to protect them and their work. Collectively, we must stand against the rise in anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, and all forms of hatred. We must combat racism. We must work towards a just response to climate change and ensure we have appropriate mechanisms to uphold human rights online. Madam Vice President, it is the prerogative of this Council to examine human rights situations that require its attention. Canada mourns the loss of innocent lives in Gaza and Israel. An immediate humanitarian ceasefire is urgently needed and is necessary to find a path towards lasting peace for Israelis and Palestinians. Civilians must be protected in accordance with international law. Palestinian civilians cannot continue to pay the price of defeating Hamas. Attacks on hospitals, medical staff, aid workers, including UN personnel and journalists are deeply concerning. Rapid, safe and unimpeded humanitarian relief must be provided. We cannot forget that this conflict began with Hamas terrorist attack against Israel on October 7th, which we unequivocally condemn. We reiterate that Hamas must lay down its arms and release all hostages immediately. We remain gravely concerned by indications that Israel is planning a ground offensive into Rafah, which would be catastrophic. We continue to condemn the horrific human rights violations perpetrated by Russia in Ukraine. The brutality of Russia's aggression has included the illegal deportation of Ukrainian children. With Ukraine, Canada is co-chairing the new International Coalition for the Return of Ukrainian Children to coordinate efforts to return children deported and forcibly transferred. Canada remains concerned with the state of human rights inside the Russian Federation and we are outraged by the recent death in detention of Alexei Navalny. We are deeply concerned by the ongoing attacks on the rights of women, girls and LGBTQI plus communities. In Afghanistan and Iran, women, girls and minorities are systemically targeted and oppressed. We must hold the Taliban accountable for its actions and we reiterate our support for the work of the fact-finding mission on Iran. We must not turn away from the devastating situation in Sudan. Canada continues to support the people of Sudan who are striving for peace and an end to violence. Madam Vice President, security, democracy, human rights and respect for diversity are being undermined. Canada reiterates the essential role of the OHCHR in combating this trend. We must continue to support the office, which must be allowed to resume its critical work in Venezuela. As we look to the summit of the future, enter the final year of the international decade for the people of African descent, and with the timeline of Agenda 2030 fast approaching, we must recommit to open and frank dialogue so we can explore creative solutions and reaffirm our shared commitment to human rights, SDGs, and the UN Charter. 
The High Commissioner for Human Rights rightly said we must find the humanity in each other. Canada would like to reinforce the importance of doing so as we work to create a brighter future. Thank you, Madam Vice President.